Welcome to Contemporary Black Voices, where we discuss the issues affecting Black America today. Today's topic deals with the education of our, our, our children, and I particularly want to find out about the church's role in that process. So today I have a friend of mine, Dr. Dr. George Johnson, and he is here to help us talk about the topic. Hello. Good morning, George. How are you doing? Good, good morning. So good to see you all. Okay. So, to, so you and I have talked about this topic on, on after a meeting with one of our doctoral mentees, and his study is actually on this topic. And we said, well, you know, I want to do a show to kind of, you know, get the ball ro uh, rolling. So I do have some questions, and uh, I want to see how well you can answer the questions, okay? <laughs> And you cannot use chat GPT to help answer the questions. Okay. So the history of the black church is that uh, right after Civil War and Reconstruction, the black church was not only the church, it was also the center of education and schooling for, for, for black children. And even during Reconstruction and pre-civil and, and pre-civil rights, we saw the black church really involved in the, the social processes of the community to, to include education. But my question to you is, have we slipped, has the black church slipped today in, in the non-spiritual education of children? Is that something that we should be concerned about? Uh, again, Sharon, thank, like you said, thank you so much for having me uh, on today. That's an excellent question. Um, I think uh, when you look at the history of the church, and particularly in the Black community, it goes beyond Reconstruction because we could meet. That's one thing that slave masters would allow people to do on the plantation was to meet uh, and have church, but we could not walk in leadership roles. So what you have uh, a period of the Reconstruction is that now the church can meet freely. And you see us now meeting freedom, and you see leaders begin to emerge in the black church. And these leaders also ran for political office and those types of things. When you connect that to what's going on today and our children, I think we have to uh, get back to that. And that's producing more leadership in our community when it comes to us. And I believe that those leaderships can directly have an impact on education. I don't think we've slipped in a way, but I do think that we have to re redefine our message to fit the culture of today. Okay. So, um, are the churches in positions to create programs, especially when we're seeing the, the purposeful elimination of black history programming in public schools and even universities? Is the black church in the position to to come in, in in that leadership role and bring that information back to the church, such as via uh, after school programming, et cetera, and 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 a willingness again to bring in a non spiritual education system into the into the church system? We we have we're gonna have to. We're going to have to do that because one of the things, if you look at the statistics of today, is that there is a disconnect between the younger generation and the church. They're falling away because they're saying they don't believe that the church is fitting their messaging that they're trying to do as far as like when you look at movements like Black Lives Matter. But this divide in the church and, 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 and its, its purpose behind civil rights movement and Black history it has always been something that has plagued the church. Even if you look at the civil rights movement, right, there was a split between what you call the progressive uh, Baptists and then you had the national Baptists. Right. The progressive Baptists, they supported the messaging of Martin Luther King and they pushed that messaging. But the national, they didn't want to get involved in that uh, because I guess the stigma that was related to that and then the the role of the black clergy. They didn't want to see the role of the black clergy as a movement into civil rights. But we have to get back to that because we have to see 
this divide that social injustice is an ethical issue. It's a moral issue. And we have to be able to address that from our pulpits. Okay. And you know, you're right. I, I have noticed that there is a leaning away from the hardcore topics that I think that even me as a, a as a black a, a church attendee would, you know, want to hear. And also we're seeing a lot of black churches slowly integrating. And I'm wondering if that head of this integration piece is is becoming a, a hindrance for black churches to say, you know what, these black kids and other kids are not hearing black history information. We're just going to have open, we're going to open up operations here at the church. So does the, has the integration of black churches become a hindrance in these efforts? It, it can be if you want to, it, it can be, but we need to look at integration of the black church, not necessarily as a hindrance, but we need to embrace it. And not just the integration of black and whites, but we need to look at the church of integration of all. The messaging of the church is this. He said, come unto me all ye that labor and of heavy labor. The church should be a safe, safe haven for all, for us to learn from each other. But we, as the black clergy, we cannot forget our role. This is an opportunity for us to educate and to empower and to uplift the community that has oppressed us and to let them know, listen, our suffering is not just an isolated issue. We need to be able to share this issue and not be embarrassed about it. And for long as we have reached across the aisles and we've reached and we wanted to integrate the church, but we can't lose our central messaging of empowerment in the church. You know, when my father was a minister, of, uh, uh, was an associate minister of a church. I want to make sure I say that right. <laughs> and and uh, he was one of the few ministers who was bold enough to talk about the black presence in the Bible yeah. as part of his sermon. And, and that was, I'm going to say, 15 years ago, plus or minus. I haven't seen that boldness, especially with a lot of the controversy, you know, Hebrews to Negroes, uh, the whiteness of uh, uh, the whiteness of the Bible, et cetera. I'm not hearing this boldness to just come on and say, you know, this is an opportunity to correct the narrative. What about you? We, we need to get back to, and you are absolutely right. One of the things we have to understand and um, is that when you look at the church, right, and I remember, and I, this was not too long ago, when there was a certain person that was in office, well, you had white clergy that were not afraid to support this particular candidate. But then when Obama was in office, I saw black clergy backing up from this. I, I don't know what that is, but it, to me, it seems like just this need to be accepted and approved by the white clergy. I don't, I don't understand that. I don't get that because, see, my father is, I'm a third generational pastor, and we need to get back to teaching the black presence in the Bible. I fell victim to that, Sherry. I remember, I remember years ago, um, I was taking my son to daycare, and we were we were reading something, and my son said to me, he said, I showed him a picture. He said, no, that's not a picture of Jesus. I said, why isn't it a picture of Jesus? And he told me, he pointed to the picture that he saw every day in this daycare. He said, this is the picture of Jesus, which we traditionally see. And I said, and, I, and it shocked me because I've always been a person that I thought taught the black presence in the Bible, but it, it made me, it forced me to get back to teaching the black presence in the Bible. We don't do that enough, and we need to get back to that. I was listening to, and, and, and one of the things that I teach is when I was teaching about the black presence of the Bible, a lot of people don't know that Jesus had a black disciples. They don't, they don't know that. When you look at uh, the leaders in the Bible, David, they don't, they don't know that David uh, um, was a black man. They don't know these things. And so we have to get back to teaching that and really teaching the truth of the Bible. And that is that there is a strong presence, a very, the first world leader in the Bible 
was a black man. And so we got to get back to teaching the truths of that. So I got one final question, because I know the guys here are saying, okay, Sharon, you know, this is just too much female energy coming off this couch. You're doing I hope, great. I hope you can protect me, because I, I heard the, uh, the, the discussion on camera. Boy, they was firing them at you. So, so if not the black church, then where do we go? Well, we all have an obligation to teach the the history of our people. and. And not only that, to educate our people. Uh, I don't know if you know this guy, but his name is name his name is Luke Skywalker. And he said he began to thank the governor of Florida, DeSantis. He said, "I want to thank him." The, the, the rapper name is Luke Skywalker, and uh, he's a great rapper out of the '90s. And he said, "I want to thank DeSantis for passing this law." And he said, "The reason I want to thank you for passing this law." He said, because now it has made me more than ever determined to teach my child our history. Mm -hmm. And that is truly where education begins. It begins at home. And he said, I want to thank him because now I'm more than ever. So where the school cannot go, I can go and I can teach him the truth of our history. And so we have to look at it that way as well. But we have an obligation as clergy to educate, empower, and uplift. And you cannot do that without teaching the truth. And I mean the whole truth of the Bible. Amen. Okay, guys, who wants to go at him? Well, I just want to say something real quick before okay. everybody else can go. But uh, Reverend, you listen to Luke Skywalker? <laughs> Back in the day, I did. <laughs> Back, you know, my father was a pastor. And, you know, and as a pastor, they're in church all the time. And so uh -huh. some of those times when I didn't go, boy, I would turn that radio up and I would listen to Luke Skywalker. <laughs> <laughs> Why did I know that was going to be your question? <laughs> okay. Now y'all can have it. Okay. Uh, Dale, do you have a question? Greg, you have a question? Yeah, I, I would like for the pastor to... Uh, address this issue of prosperity theology that mm -hmm. seems to be spreading among a lot of our churches here, like we were emulating what white, some white churches are doing with this prosperity theology. Can, can you address that issue? Well, we have to look at prosperity not as a bad thing, okay? We have to look at that as not as a bad thing. If you really actually... Um, unveil and take off all of the, the stigmas of when it comes to prosperity. It's really just looking at being able to have enough to be able to do more and to be able to help others. That should be the central message of prosperity, not for all about me, but to, what can I do to have enough for my family and to empower others? Now, like I tell people all the time, they're bad doctors, they're bad teachers, <laughs> they're bad car salesmen. And of course, yes, there are bad preachers who have taken this message mm -hmm. and have used it for their own self-interest and yeah. own self -care. So we have to be able, like the Bible says, we have to study for ourselves to show ourselves approved, rightly dividing the word of truth. And I tell people, anytime I tell you something, don't just take my word for it. For it. You have a, your own personal relationship with God. And so you need to be able to search the scriptures for yourself. That's why education is so important. That's why it's so important. I think, Reverend, what you said was so important is that you must study for yourself. Um, so many of our preachers will tell you, just read the Bible and that's it. Mm -hmm. But you're a doctor, Sharon's a doctor, Fred is educated. Whenever you're going to school, you have to read more than one book. So mm -hmm. in order to get the total message, I think you have to, to be able to even come back to the Bible to justify some of the things that it said. You just can't go by what the minister says. And I'll tell you one, one quick story. Um, I was in church, and uh, I thought that just because I would pay my tithe, that that would be enough to be able to get to heaven. But then the preacher said, 
No, you've got to get your own self into heaven. I can't preach you into heaven. That woke me up the same way you talked about with your son. It woke me up. So my question to you is, how do we get people back to the church, back to the fundamentals, and to a place to where we can depend upon the church to be able to propel the black race further? That's, that's, a, that's a really loaded question. And that's something that a lot of people are struggling with uh, in the church is how do we get people back to the church, right? Well, we have to, number one, we have to do some rebranding in the church. But the message has can't change, but some of our methods need to change. Our messaging cannot change, but our message, our, 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 I mean, our messaging cannot change, but our methods, it needs to change. We need to, become, we need to come, back, come into the new age of this language. We need to start speaking the language of the culture. Jesus was a person that spoke the language of the culture. When he talked to farmers, he talked about planting. When he talked to the lady that was at the well and she was talking and she was talking about her husband, he talked about men. He, and when he talked about when he talked to the scholars and he talked about scholarship, we have to be able to address the culture and speak the language of the culture. The messaging is the same. If I be lifted up, I will draw all men unto me. We have to get back to lifting up Jesus, his message his message of liberty, his message of freedom, his message of social justice. We have to lift it up. His message of preaching the gospel to the poor. We have to be able to get our hands dirty, go back into the streets, stop looking for perfect people and get back to the messaging of Jesus. He said, I came into my own and my own didn't even receive me. So who do I go to? I go to the people that were rejected, the people that the, nobody wanted. And that's what we got to get back to. Go back to the people that nobody wants and build your message there. And we got and that's I, that's my central focus of our, our ministry. Okay, let, let me ask you something. We're getting late out of time here. You, you made a statement about the black ter clergy backing up on Obama. Did I misread what you were misinterpreted what you were saying? No, no, no. I don't, I, there, there were some black clergy that were so aligned with a particular party mm -hmm. that they did not support Obama openly, openly. But we heard a lot of white clergy openly supporting this candidate, openly saying that uh, President Trump was called of God, openly saying that he's the savior. But we didn't hear that when it came to uh, a lot of black clergy supporting Obama. And we should not have been ashamed of that. That mm -hmm. is something that we, as the black clergy, should have been the cheerleaders on. We should have been leading that. Okay. Uh, let, me, let, me, let me ask you this question. What do you perceive as the legacy of the black church? Mm. That... Phew. We need to do a paper on that one. Yeah, that's... <laughs> You know, because when you when you when you talk about the legacy of the black church, you go back to the messaging of the black church. Before there was a Catholic church, there was an African church in Ethiopia. And what was that message? Well, you got to understand what was that message? Well, the message was preached to Philip, one of the disciples of Jesus. Because Philip wanted, he wanted answers. He wanted an understanding. And there was an Ethiopian eunuch that connected with Philip. And so out of that message, what was that message? A message of hope. A message of justice. A message of freedom. A message of liberty. We have, uh, that has to be our, our, our branding, is a message of not only equality, but equity for all, that has to be our message. And we have to hold on to that because that is the message. Like my mama used to say, that kept her mama and kept her mama mama. <laughs> it's that message of 
there's a bright side somewhere. Okay. That I've, message hope. I've got one more question before we hang up. You are you're on my Facebook group and you are killing it with your Facebook uh, uh, postings. How are you using that to help other ministers to to leverage their presence beyond the, the church? That that is the central messaging of Success Nation Network is that we specialize in taking the church beyond the four walls into the community using social media. One of the things that uh, a lot of churches fell victim to is that when COVID hit, a lot of churches had to close their doors because we didn't have the infrastructure of technology to continue our messaging. And that's what I was saying when I was saying we got to get back to speaking the language of the culture. Mm -hmm. And so what I have done is I've did everything that I can to help pastors to empower them to get this, this, we need to stop running away from social media and we need to, we need to use this as the platform to do the great commission. And the Great Commission is to take the gospel into all of the world. We got to stop preaching to each other. We got to take it into all of the world. Amen. Here, and, and, and Fred, I know we're out of time, but I've got one pressing question I would like to ask okay. him. When my guy in the red, my, my man in the red, he didn't want to ask me a question. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm, I'm, I'm listening. I'm enjoying. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, you know, when you talked about Obama, the clergy, uh, we began to see a division between white Christianity and black Christianity. And, you know, some of the kids that I talk to is wondering, well, now it seems like the white Christianity is really against black. And that has continued. You talked about a president that maybe we had after Obama and how those things have gone. But it seemed to me to bring a division between Christianity and what white folks, some white folks were preaching versus what actually was happening with black folks. And I'd like you to address that. Um, that, that, that was an excellent question. As well, man, y'all asked some really, really, really good questions. One of the things we have to understand is that Jesus is not a Republican. And the Republican <laughs> Party has done this job of aligning uh, their party with Jesus. And, and, and if you really look at the life of Jesus and you study the life of Jesus, if anything, Jesus probably would have been an independent. He wouldn't, have, he wouldn't have been on either side. But the Republican Party has done a masterful job of aligning their messaging with that by focusing on one issue. We have to stop teaching that Jesus was a Republican and this particular party is the party of this. Jesus was not even in politics. He wasn't. He was about the kingdom of God. And so that's what we got to get back to is to understand the fact that you can be on your, your political thought and your political belief is that. But your relationship with Christ is the only thing that's going to last. Okay. That's a great way to end. I know that's right. Well, I want to thank you, uh, George, Dr. George, Reverend <laughs> Dr. Bishop George Johnson. <laughs> yeah, I told you that was going to take a lot. That was going to take a and lot of the segment I right there. I hope that one day you can come back and visit us again. And with that, we want to. And you know, I'm going to get your wife. So yeah, with that, yeah. we're going to get started for a break. Thank y'all for having me. I'm so. Um, <laughs> Ladies, to be a part. Thank you so much. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye.